Hello? Hello? Hello, 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 hello. 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 I <laughs> my name is Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks. And this guy over here is James Maynard, otherwise known as Sweet Baby James. And you are watching the Granny Rocks show. where I talk and play the piano at the same time. I actually do that. And tonight, I'm going to talk about something that's going to be really fun. I'm talking about intuition. Intuition, what is it? I can't remember the second question. What is it? Uh, do you have it? Do you it? have it? And can you trust it? <laughs> is it dangerous? Right. Anyway, but I'm not going to do that yet because I'm first uh, turning this over to this guy over yes, here. Yes, uh, welcome to Granny Rocks where we have the opportunity to hear Granny share her wit, her wisdom, and her uncommon sense every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. So thanks for coming, and now over to Granny. Did you say 6.30 Pacific Time? I did. You did, I don't even remember that. We don't have any comments yet, so we're assuming that we are broadcasting. And usually people say hi in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we are going to... Oh, you have one. Hello from Cat and Lizzie. Oh, good. We're Hello, sending lots Cat of love. Lots thank of love. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank so you. that makes us feel so much better because now we know we are in fact broadcasting. And Amy has, uh, says here, welcome, Granny and James. Oh, Yay. and welcome, Amy. Thank you so much. So, okay. So I don't know what I'm going to say about intuition tonight because... I'm intuitive, and I'm just going to intuit what to talk about. <laughs> so, as I said in the Not little... Not to you've been teaching it for decades. Decades, decades. So, what I said in the... Uh, and it looks like... In the uh, description. In the description. Uh, Tracy says, hello, hola, and sends lots of love and caring. Hola, Tracy. And same back at you. And Jose says, hi, Mama and Papa. God bless you. Oh, God bless you, Jose. Gracias, Jose. And God bless you, too. Excellent. And Terry oh. says, hi. Hi, Terry. Hello, Terry. Uh, my niece. All right. My so here niece. we go. And Karen. Oh. Lots more love for me. Oh, my God. Yay. Thank right. you, guys. Thank you. Well, she we're definitely on the air. Love. So... It's always a good idea to send love first before I say anything because, you know, if you don't like what I have to say, oh, James, there's more. There's another one. There is. And Todd says, <laughs> hi, and happy Halloween. And happy Halloween to you, even though it isn't Halloween yet, but it will be soon. So, anyway, intuition. Woo, spooky. Perfect for Halloween. It is, isn't it? Right. Woo. Didn't they used to burn women at the stake for being intuitive? Absolutely. <laughs> Which is, so that's perfect. I hadn't even thought of that. How appropriate. So what is intuition to start with? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, as I said in my little blurb in the beginning, uh, I have been using my intuition to make a living uh, since 1980 yeah. when I suddenly got it and became an intuitively guided counselor. I had no idea what I was doing. I had never been a counselor. I had no training as a counselor. And I had no training in intuition. But all of a sudden, I just started hearing things. It's like, woo, what's that, right? Woo, <laughs> And of course, I got scared, oh, the devil, or whatever. Anyway, it was perfectly benign. It was a great thing. It helped everybody. It helped me. It helped them. It was a good thing. But anyway, I've been doing that, and I've also been teaching intuition training for many decades. So I have something to share about it, though I don't know what I'm going to share tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but so my first question is, what is intuition? First of all, it's not some exotic 
weird thing that only some people have or they only have it at Halloween or if they have to be witches or they have to be women or they have to be anything. No. Oh, there is somebody. Oh, my. Here's a big message. Hello. Namaste. Na I'm Rabbi Chambling. Rai Lim Chung Bung. Gal Palika. Bit better to hit much, the C you know, more. And there's more. We have no C more. Can C you more? click on that? C more. Here we go. From Kathmandu. From Kathmandu. Hello, Kathmandu. Yay. Yes. Anyway. Namaste. Namaste. Lovely. Lovely. So, intuition is just the ability to get a sense of things that you can't explain away through the other five senses. Mm -hmm. It's not your eyes. It's not your ears. It's not touch. It's not smell, it's not taste. Somehow, you have, you have a hunch or you know something. You know it's going to happen or you know what happened or you know what's going on and you shouldn't. So I remember when I was doing counseling early on and people said, oh, no, 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 it's not intuition. It's you're getting signals. Like somebody said to me, you know, it's like that body language. And I said, yes, but in those days I worked on the phone. <laughs> so how did, so how did I read the body language on the phone? That's what I guess it was like, <gasps> that must have been the body language. It's just <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> because, you know, it's a very common experience. It's just that it isn't talked about much. I don't know why. I really don't. So... Well, uh, science has come along and, and said if, if it isn't verified by the senses, it just don't exist. But you can verify it afterward by the senses. And uh -huh. I don't know, maybe because, uh, uh, you know, it was associated with women. Well, it, then it couldn't be real. Anyway, I am <laughs> not going to use my intuition right now to try to figure out why there's so much prejudice against intuition. But I challenge you to not have had an experience with intuition. I bet you every one of you has had a feeling like, oh, my grandma, uh, who at 13 went to Poland to work, she, you know, uh, she was poor and she had to go, and she had a sense that her father had died and she got her ass back to her hometown and sure enough, her father had died. So, you know, people have feelings like that. They have, I have an intuitive sense that this puppy is going to work out or isn't going to work out. Or even an intu intuitive sense of when to call somebody when they haven't been home and then sh they're there. And then all of a sudden, that's right. And another thing we have intuitive senses about is people. It's like, I knew that guy was no good from the moment that I met him. Right? How many of us have had that intuition? Now, I'm not saying they're always right, but I'm saying we've all had that experience. I have a feeling that I'm going to get that job, or I have that feeling that I am not going to get that job, and I don't care what they tell me. I just have that feeling. So anyway, it's just the way we know. Now, a lot of people have it, but they don't develop it. They don't harness it. They don't train it, and I'm going to have this thing in my mouth. It's very annoying. Okay. And, you know, it's like, you know, maybe you have a, a really good capacity to ride a bicycle, but if you don't practice riding, you're never going to get as good as you would if you actually practiced, right? That's so right. I am not, at the moment... <laughs> trying to recruit you into my intuition training. I'm just saying that a lot of people have intuition and neglect it or suppress it. And now, why would we do that? Why would we neglect it or suppress it? Well, maybe it hasn't been supported in our culture. You know, maybe some cultures really honor intuition and some cultures don't. Or in your family. Or maybe your dad was the kind of guy who said, Give me the facts, baby. Give me the facts. I just want to know. Well, you know, you may be picking up the facts with your intuition that nobody else wants to know. But see, that is a big part of why we don't develop intuition.
because it can scare people. Why do I say that? Because with intuition, we can see past a lot of the facades, right? You know, it's like you see somebody and they're talking and they're like this. Hello. Uh, yes, I'm very happy to meet you. Well, you know, you, you know they're not. You know, you, they're, you can <laughs> pick it up, the energy. You're picking up the vibe. You're picking up the energy. So maybe people don't want you to know what's underneath. So they don't want you to have intuition. For example, I had a man come in as a client once and I knew there was something with this guy he wasn't sharing. And I kept saying, so isn't there something else? And isn't there something else? I couldn't get in because he was blocking me, but I knew there was something else. And finally, he admitted that he was embezzling funds from his company. So he didn't want me to have into. In fact, he never came back. You know, he didn't want to be seen. Okay. But oh, looks looky like here. Ooh, look. We have a message from Amy. I know a lot of times people write off times when we are thinking of someone and then receive a phone call from them as coincidence That's instead right. of intuition. That is a very good point. And then mm. there's another one there, James. Yes. Nancy says, good evening to you both. I enjoy your shows. Thank you. Oh, Thank well, you, we Nancy. love the fact that you're enjoying our shows. We really do. We enjoy the fact that our viewers enjoy us. You know, it makes us happy. So anyway, so do you see how threatening intuition can be because we can often see past what people want us to see about them so there hasn't been a lot of and you know when we're children it starts right i know my mother is angry but she's smiling right oh i love your father or i love you oh god i wish you would fall over this the cliff because I'm so tired. You know what I mean? It doesn't even mean that this is a bad person. It just may mean that you don't want to be seen, right? So it's very threatening. Okay, so now I have so many things to talk about about this show, so I'm going to move on. But you can think of lots of other reasons why people don't want to know about intuition. But most of it has to do with being exposed in some way. So now... I think the question, the next question I ask is, uh, do you have any? Well, of course you do. Well, everybody's got a right brain, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has intuition. Now, do they have as much? Does this one have as much intuition as that one? Probably not. I mean... I just happen to have a very strong intuition, even though I don't know where it came from, but it only showed up, you know, in my... 30s. L late 30s, yeah. So I started hearing voices in 1980, and it was like, I could hear them like somebody was talking to me. Now, and I had these experiences that I had to follow my intuition where I would go to empty buildings and knock on doors and buy houses that I couldn't afford and all of this based on intuition. So, yes, I had a very strong intuition, but I also cultivated it, right? Mm-hmm, yep. Because I could value it, I saw how valuable it could be to people that I had this intuition because immediately the day that I discovered that I was intuitive, on that very day, I started counseling, believe it or not. A woman came over and she asked me if I would do some counseling with her. I won't go into the details at all. And it was pretty amazing. So I immediately saw its value. And I knew that it came from some divine, positive, divine energy. Because everything that I did had the intention of helping people. Now, I want to talk about, can you trust it? Because now it gets into some sticky stuff. A 
lot of people, and I've seen this even in people who call themselves professional psychics or whatever, and by intuition I don't necessarily mean that I'm going to tell you, oh yeah, you're going to meet a guy in a brown raincoat and then he, you know, you're going to make a million dollars. No, that's not what my intuition is for. I got my intuition to help heal people. That was what it's for. I, I could see into them. I could see what their true feelings were and I could see things from their past and it was very, very helpful. But I have seen people who knowingly, but usually not knowingly, make stuff up and call it intuition. Now, why would somebody do that? Now, as I said, a lot of these people are doing it without knowing it. And I know why. It's because we want to believe what we want to believe. Now, before getting too down on intuition, I want to ask you, do you, because you, the question is, can you trust it? Can you trust your eyesight? Can you trust your hearing? What about all the other senses that you have? They are not always 100% trustworthy, are they? Like you have 10 eyewitnesses to the bank robbery. And everybody has a different story, right? He did it. No, she did it. No, uh, I saw it. I'm an eyewitness and I saw it. And people are not accurate in their observations with their eyes. And yet people don't walk around saying, I can't trust my eyes. <laughs> Speaking of trusting your eyes, on my, in real life here, I mean in the flesh, this is a deep purple. I don't know, I mean really purpley. I don't know what color it is on your screen. When I look on the it's screen. It's blue on my screen. It's a bluish purple or a purplish blue. This is not remotely the same color. And you, ha you have a very vivid green here in person. That's right. But it looks like a pale blue on my screen. Oh, well, to me, that looks like a pale green. See, we don't even see color the <laughs> same way. So we have, we don't <laughs> see color the same way as we all know that. And we have the screen and we have the internet. So can you trust what you see? And then, of course, today you've got Photoshop Photoshop, Photoshop, that's the end of reliability in pictures. You know, was that doctor, was it not? Can you trust what you see? Can you trust what you hear? Uh, most of us have some areas of our hearing that are not quite as good as others. I can hear, I hear sounds that nobody hears very high-pitched sounds. On the other hand, I miss a lot <laughs> of other sounds, right? And I'm not even a dog. So, <laughs> but people say, oh, I don't trust what I hear. I'm not even talking about reactions. I hear music and I think, oh, I hate that music, you know, and somebody else says, I love it. And you know, a year later, I listened to the same music and I thought, that's beautiful, right? So there's issues of judgment, but there's also even issues of perception that are skewed by what we are capable of seeing or hearing or tasting. Oh, that tastes so sour. That tastes so bitter that I think it's delicious or the opposite, right? So, but people don't go around saying, well, you can't trust your taste and you can't trust your hearing. But you see, it's the prejudice against intuition. It's the scary thing about it, right? So a lot of times, as I say, our tr intuition is not really intuition. And that's when you really are in trouble. It's wishful thinking. It's vindictive. It's opinion. Oh, yes, I'm seeing you. Uh, and it's really all projection. You know, I'm making this up. I don't even know I'm making it up. I think I'm seeing it. I'm seeing something. Actually, what it is is, you know, uh, there's a fly in front of my face. And, uh, you know, I think it's the king. So anyway, <laughs> this is the truth. So sometimes I see it, but I don't see, I'm not seeing it with my intuition. I'm seeing it with my opinions, with my mind, with my wishful thinking, with 
my vindictiveness. I want, oh, I know that he's no good. Well, maybe you don't know that he's no good. Maybe he is good. Maybe you just don't want your daughter to marry him. So now you say, oh, I know, or you, he's poor. So you decide that he's no good because he's poor. Oh, I can tell. I can immediately tell that, you know, people like that. So you know what I'm saying? This is the whole problem with all of our perceptions and uh, all of our senses and all of our thinking. We can be pretty skewed, right? So how can we learn to trust our intuition? I'll tell you. Don't trust anything that is going on in your own mind. Mm. But verify. Mm. Verify. In other words, and before you get to the verify, be s practice neutrality. Now, I, I can't do an intuition training on you know, on the, this thing today because I, I can't work with you. But I want you to realize that a lot of the problem is that people are not neutral and are not objective. They're trying, so for instance, somebody will tell you something. It could be their opinion or they could be picking up what you want to hear, and then they are reading it back to you. And they are picking up something, but they don't know what they're picking up, right? So you, you can't just say, because I intuited this, maybe I know what you want to hear, and I want you to like me, so, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Or... some other motivation, like I said, people have opinions based on prejudice. I met a woman who said she was very intuitive. I don't know how I got in there, but... Uh, uh, look oh, here's another comment. Nancy says, judgmental? Question, question, question mark. I'm not sure what the question is, but you're absolutely... Well, uh, pe people who are judgmental, and then they put it yes. out as an, an intuitive feeling. That's right. That is exactly right. That is very... So we need to watch ourselves. We need to learn how to be neutral. We need to learn how to be neutral anyway. Mm -hmm. If we want to... And see, I would call it divine guidance. It's like something is coming through me, and... But what? And where is it coming from? So it's like anything else. We need to practice, practice, practice. Practice something that we can actually verify. For instance, I was told that I should go ahead and look at a house that I couldn't afford. And the real estate agent said, this was years ago when I was first you know, doing this, the real estate agent said, I'm not even going to take you to that house. You couldn't qualify for that house. No way on earth. It's just like, let's forget about it. And I got the same message the next week. You're going to buy that house. You're going to buy that house. And I went to her and I said, well, this at that time I had guides that were talking to me. Now I just call it intuition. And uh, can you close that? So what happened was I insisted and the real estate agent finally took me there. And guess what? I didn't have to qualify because there was another situation going on. Oh, here's another thought uh, Amy has shared. It's about uh, what Nancy had said about judge yeah. mental. And she says, she wrote it as two separate words. Maybe she's saying that we may be judging or thinking mental rather than being intuitive. That is exactly right. Mm -hmm. We can be judging or we could be being mental. Absolutely. So that in that particular case, I ended up living in the house. So that was proof that my intuition... Yeah, the, the, the seller accepted you. That's right. Your, your that's offer. right, because they didn't care about me. Uh, they didn't ha look at the tax returns. All they looked at my was my credit score, because it was a construction company, and I didn't know any of that. So 
what I'm just using that as one example. I have like a million examples in my life where I just knew things that I couldn't possibly know. And, uh, and they worked out. So I know I'm intuitive. Now, I also have the same obligation that everybody else does to verify, to look honestly, and to question myself. Do I have a motive there that could be getting in the way of the truth? So we are running out of time, and uh, I have only dipped into this topic, <laughs> but I hope that it was a fun dip. <laughs> and I ask you, don't discredit intuition. Cultivate but it. But cultivate it. Train it. Yeah. And I guess if you want to know more about how you train it, you can ask me. I do intuition training. But uh, I'm not here to sell anything tonight. I want you to take it seriously. Intuition is a powerful tool, and it can be used for the good if your intention is clean and if you are willing to go through the rigorous training. And I'll tell you one more thing before I go. When I first got this intuition, I'll tell you how I was trained. I would walk out the door. I, g I, I was told, don't eat anything, don't drink anything, don't do anything until you get the guidance. So I, you know, that was something. I would be hungry and I would sit there and wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then I'd be thirsty and I'd sit there and wait. And then I would be told to go out and get in the car and, and drive left, drive right, do this, do that. And uh, I listened and I just kept listening and I kept practicing and I, pra and I would be scared, I would be lost, and somehow or other I got home. So it worked. That was the way I was being trained from the inside by, by doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and starting to listen and to tune in very, very carefully to what I'm hearing. But again, the most important thing is before you jump to any intuitive conclusion or any in conclusion of any kind, just check yourself out. How neutral are you or do you have your own motive. Gotta go. We have a meeting. Mm -hmm. Come see us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific time. I bless, play the piano. Intuitively. Intuitively. I always, I do everything intuitively. And come back next week at 6.30 p.m. to Granny Rocks and see what we're talking about next. Put in your comments. Love you. Gotta go. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.